Good morning everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day or a wonderful evening wherever you are and I hope you're getting the chance to do some crafting yourself. So I wanted to share my completed Roxy Journal of Stitchery piece for this past two weeks. Coming up to this Wednesday we'll be getting our new prompt. So the prompt for this piece was a winter bird or a winter owl or a Christmas bird. So I've taken the Christmas bird prompt, but I didn't want to create anything too, too Christmassy. Um, so I wanted to use a piece of fabric that I've had in my hoard for a while and I've been not using it, but this seemed the perfect opportunity to put it into use. So this is the piece of fabric. And as you can see, it's not particularly Christmassy. If anything, I'd say it's probably more got the look of being autumn, um, autumnal in its colours. So more those rusty browny oranges and those lighter, more sort of muted greens. Even the bird is more um, bluey, bluey, um, sort of a bit of red around the, the head of it. But I figured it had enough elements um, that could evoke those Christmas feels with some further embellishment um, and some painting with thread, as we call it. So I started out by tearing a piece of the fabric so that I would get these lovely frayed um, edges. You don't have to worry about the frayed edges if it's not something you're going to be washing, which these blocks won't be washed. And also when you stitch them down, if you're stitching them down to a base, it also protects them and locks the, the threads threads in place. So I'll bring it up to the camera and just show you some of the elements that make it up because I've used really simple easy to do stitches in this so this is something that if you could definitely try whether you're a beginner or more advanced and it's just such a lovely relaxing way to work and to bring your own imagination to the piece in terms of how you want to stitch each of the elements. So let's start with the bird. I'll just focus it again. See if we can get a bit of better focus around the head there. So with the bird, I've used lots of tiny little seed stitches um, to follow in the direction of the eye there. Let's just focus again. There we go. So lots of little seed stitches radiating out from the eye. I've left the beak and the eye as is without stitches. And then for the body of the bird, again, I've used lots of tiny little overlapping seed stitches, both in regular embroidery floss, but also in um, variegated perle cotton. Um, and the variegated cotton is really great to work with because you get lots of colours in a single um, piece of thread, so it's less changing of the needle. So that's my little bird there. Now the bird standing on a branch where I've just done some little um, running stitch but vertically across. And then let's see if we can show you, without making you totally seasick, um, the sateen stitching that I've done on the leaves to give the effect of um, the leaf and the vein. So that's in a darker sort of um, khaki green because I wanted the bird to really stand out. So you can see that there. So then moving down here, we have um, back stitch outlining um, these, these green leaves here um, and also creating the veins um, within the leaves. So you can see that there. And then I've used some ready orangey, browny yellow um, perle cotton for these little um, buds um, on here and then I've also used the, um, a ready burgundy perle over on the flower over here as well as more of that um, running stitch and back stitch um, actually back stitch around the leaves over here moving on to my pomegranates and I can see a bit of white cotton there so let's take that off um, I've used a metallic ready coloured um, thread um, to create lots of little seed stitches to give some really beautiful dimension um, to that pomegranate. Let's just try and focus again. So 
So lots of tiny little seed stitches um, to give a beautiful sense of the that rounded shape of the pomegranate. So I'm really happy with how those turned out. Did the same up on this one. I'm just showing from a different angle. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, I used the Pearl A um, satin stitch there. And you can see the satin, satin or satin, not sure which it is, um, stitch up on the leaf up there. Moving around here, I used um, the Pearl A in a ready colour to do some little French knots. And then I put some antique um, red beads that almost have a real glow to them um, to create the sense of berries. Over here I used a variegated metallic um, thread so it's given lots of lovely different colours. Hopefully the camera's yeah, catching it there um, in the leaves that I've done just again with um, backstitch. And then over here and it's also on the other side as well um, I've done um, seed stitch within these green leaves, the leaves themselves in the fabric had a sort of a um, yeah, little line pattern on it so I thought I'd um, do seed stitch but in a darker green and then up here um, I've done some metallic, um, just some running sort of random stitches to give a sense of um, translucent sort of almost like maybe dew on the on the flowers there. And then over here, um, that same seed stitch um, on the leaf and then the metallic um, thread on the petals of that orangey rusty coloured one. Um, and then some more berries with the French knots and the antique beads and then a bit of outlining of the pomegranate over there. And so, yeah, I think that's the, the piece. Um, and there, oh, and that's some chain stitch. I don't know if I mentioned that chain stitch down on the bottom one down here. But again, very simple um, stitches that I've used here. And then I've um, yeah, tacked it down just with a running, very small running stitch around the outside onto this um, yellow gingham. So I'll show you some of the things um, the materials that I used for it in case you want to have a go at doing your your own and want to take some inspiration from it. So as I mentioned I used a range of standard um, embroidery floss. I just keep my smaller pieces of embroidery floss on these little uh, washing, what are they? Vintage style wooden wash pegs. pegs. Losing track of my words today, but anyway, you know what I mean. And so they're great because I can actually just have them sitting up along my um, sewing surface in front of me and then I can just easily grab them and see which ones I want to use to go with um, different bits of the whatever I'm working on. So I've just got a range of, of those ones, um, reds and all different, and then the more neutral ones. So this is the off-white that I use, just a single strand of um, around the outside to tack it down and in fact everything here on here was all just single strands of the embroidery floss um, so as not to be overwhelming. The pearl A itself is a thicker um, and you don't actually reduce, you don't try and unwind the pearl A, it's just you use it at the width that it comes. So the pearl A which was all the variegated um, with different colours within it um, is Wonderfeel Pearl, pearl A cotton. And so I've got this sort of um, ready and burgundy, um, ready and burgundy, but with a bit of more browns in it. Um, some beautiful um, variegated green and a more orangey and browny and yellowy one. As I mentioned, I also used a range of metallics. So this is the variegated metallic that I used on the leaves up here. This is a vintage gold metallic from Guttemann which I used on down here and this is um, a vintage rusty sort of orangey coloured that I used up on the, the petals up here as well as the red metallic. I think this is a newer red metallic um, 
that I use down on the, the pomegranate down here. And then, as I mentioned, some antique glass beads that were used for beading the little berries down there. So when I'm working with metallics, I like to use a shortish, thicker um, needle. This one's a chenille um, needle. And the reason for that is that because it's thicker, it doesn't create as much drag on the metallic threads, which can be a bit tricky to use. Um, and if you use a really thin needle, you're creating more drag when it um, pulls itself through the hole. The thicker needle means you're creating a slightly larger hole and the um, metallic thread can travel through a bit more unimpinged. Um, and the reason for that is that a lot of the metallics actually have a base piece um, that you might be able to see here. I don't think I'll be able to zoom in that well on it. It won't want to pick it up, will it? So I'll just put it back um, down here. Um, but it's got like an inner black within the metallic wound around it. Now, if that gets lots of drag, you'll find the metallic will sort of unwind and you'll start to see bits of black in your um, your work. It's good when you're working with metallics as well as using the, the wider, shorter needle to also um, only work with shorter lengths of it so that it doesn't um, have as many times that it has to travel through the fabric. So they're all the um, threads that I used. Again, you can use just whatever you, you have yourself, but it is fun to bring some metallics in every now and then into the pieces as well as um, some beads and embellishments. For this particular piece, I've chosen not to um, do an ornate or embellished background. I actually really liked the way the yellow gingham just makes the central um, embroidered piece really pop. And I find the yellow and the white just gives that lovely sense of summer days here in Australia, which is when Christmas occurs here. Um, and that real warmth and that um, really beautiful light that comes at that time of year. So this is my little Christmassy wonderland. We do always enjoy um, adding pomegranates to our, our Christmas table in salads or in, in drinks. Um, so I thought it was quite fitting, even though I don't think normally the pomegranates are, are fruiting here in Australia. It was also a lovely little reference because mum's um, currently away um, camping down down at the beach with my uncle um, and she's got me looking after some little pomegranates that she actually grew from last year's um, Christmas pomegranate that she thought was a particularly tasty one. So I'm looking after her plants for her at the moment. So far they are doing, doing, doing well. And I'm also enjoying getting the summer garden ready in between when I'm crafting um, and obviously working. Um, and so these are some beautiful um, sweet peas, which actually I haven't had to do anything at all for because they self-seeded from the sweet peas that I planted um, last year. But they've just got the most divine aroma and the most cheery colours to them. Um, I wish this was smell -a vision so you could actually enjoy just that beautiful aroma that I always think smells like green tea with just the most lovely, sweetest, but fresh floral um, overtones on it. So let's just bring my piece back into focus. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I won't be, won't keep blabbing on anymore. I hope you do have a wonderful rest of day or rest of evening, and I hope you're getting the chance to enjoy your crafting as much as I am. Thanks everyone, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.